quiet when you guys do this thing? No. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Anderson. I'm president here at St. Francis Medical Center. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to what is certainly a day that we've been looking forward to for quite some time. Uh, the first day of giving, uh, giving COVID vaccines to our mission partners. Um, and it's something that we have been talking about and preparing for for um, a very long time. And we're really glad to see this day come. I want to uh, thank Governor Pritzker, um, Dr. Iziki, and Representative Gordon Booth for being with us here uh, today. And I'd also like to thank all of our mission partners who, like healthcare workers around this country, have been coming to work every day and uh, handling uh, the pandemic crisis and making sure that our patients get the best care possible. And so this morning, we're going to be uh, delivering the vaccine to five of our mission partners. Shannon uh, Leash is here to uh, issue those vaccines. And so I'm going to invite um, our five people one at a time to come up. We have uh, Shamika Jones. Uh, we have uh, Juan Fernandez, uh, then Doug Meyer, uh, Evelyn Tatum, and Victor Chan will all come up and receive uh, their vaccine one at a time. And uh, after that, we'll gather together for a quick photo op and then turn things over to the governor. So, Shannon, so, take it away. Good, awesome. Shamika, why don't you come up and sit in my blue chair? <laughs>
Jeff, you're up next. Sounds good. You seem okay. to have a pretty good track record with the left arm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now's not the time to change. You don't it. want to throw any curves. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Line up for a quick photo off, kind of appropriately distance, so you can see all together. started today. At this time, uh, we're going to welcome to the microphone. Yeah, it's very heavy. Good job. Totally normal, natural to have 
12 or 15 cameras. So I won't touch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one touches it. You don't want to fall down. <laughs> good job. Okay. Everyone be still Very good. Thank you very much. And just uh, before I take questions, I just want to say how pleased I am uh, about the very important day that you're all witnessing. Uh, this is a, a beginning for the state of Illinois, uh, people getting vaccinated. Uh, particularly our healthcare workers, is an exciting moment. I hope that everybody will take note that you were part of this and witnessed this. Uh, these uh, healthcare workers have been working all throughout this pandemic, taking care of people on the front lines. These are our heroes. And, and our heroes um, now have stepped forward to get their vaccine uh, and to show the way for everybody. And I'm really I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be a part of this moment with all of you, uh, and I'm very excited for what's to come for the entire state of Illinois. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions from members of the media. Okay, what kind of security was given to the vaccines that were you know, taken from the center up in Chicago, downstate, and everywhere else? Mm -hmm. um, so the question was, what kind of security has been provided for the vaccines, for the people who are carrying the vaccines? Um, we have made arrangements uh, through our public safety uh, efforts in the state, so that's the uh, Illinois State Police uh, and local law enforcement to make sure that at every step of the way these vaccines are protected uh, once they arrive in the state and to uh, the locations that they're, uh, the original location, of course, for the vast majority of the state uh, was our state national stockpile, the, the uh, SNS. Uh, and every step of the way, I uh, met with the state troopers that were at the SNS yesterday, uh, and they escort these vaccines as they move from the SNS to the RHCCs, the, the regional hospitals uh, that also have uh, uh, ultra cold storage. And then uh, local law enforcement typically are accompanying the local health departments as they pick up the vaccines and take them to the various places that they go. Governor Pritzker, when you announced your plan to restore Illinois, you said that we couldn't go to concerts or sports stadiums or reopen our businesses until a vaccine arrived. That's right. Well, I see one. Yeah. <laughs> You'd like me to open everything up? Here's the... What does that process look like? When can people sure. feel safely? They don't have to wear a mask anymore. What does that process look like over the next few months? Yeah. So the question was uh, phase five of the Restore Illinois plan that we put out months and months ago. Uh, calls for, uh, you know, an opening of the state. And uh, it's in the event that there is a vaccine that's widely available or uh, successful treatments that are widely available. Uh, and so today is the beginning of a process that allows us to move toward reopening the state entirely. Uh, it will take some time. As you know, the uh, manufacturers of these vaccines are working as diligently as they can, the FDA, uh, working diligently to give emergency use authorization uh, and to uh, get us the vaccines that we need to cover the millions of people that will get vaccines in the state of Illinois. So uh, the length of time, you know, as you talk to the experts, what they would say is that the manufacturing process uh, will take some time so that they can deliver them, um, you know, as fast as they can, but, but months will go by here while we are working through the ACIP uh, CDC guideline uh, for first for uh, healthcare workers and for those in long-term care facilities and then for uh, the many others that are in the various phases, 1B, 1C, 2, and 3, and 4, um, until we get uh, herd immunity, that's what we're all aiming for, for the state of Illinois and for the United States of America. Governor, there were some, uh, there were a couple of hospitals in the suburbs that were expecting to administer their first shot today. Hmm. That's being moved to tomorrow. Can you explain what's causing those delays? And can you also tell us how this site was chosen for this today? 
culture. Um, so uh, we wanted to make sure that, as occurred in the city of Chicago too, um, and in a number of other places, that people could see the first people who will get vaccines in the state. So that's why we're here in Peoria. Um, the SNS is uh, nearby, and so this made it uh, more convenient. Uh, to make sure that we could do this today. As for hospitals that aren't going to begin vaccinating until tomorrow, uh, that's because, uh, and you may have heard uh, yesterday, I had the uh, CEO of the Illinois Hospital Association, Healthcare Association, uh, at my press conference, and the hospitals themselves, for the most part, have asked for uh, delivery on certain days. And so we've made sure that we adhered to their requests. Uh, I know that some hospitals are anxious to get theirs. Uh, their communications folks would like to have been the first, let's say, in their area uh, to do it. But uh, the hospital associations, the administrators, those who run the hospitals are the ones who ultimately determined uh, when they would have their timeline begin for vaccinating people at their hospital. How many do we expect to get the first dose today? I'm sorry? Um, you know, I'm not sure how many will be done today. I know that, you know, we're, we're rolling out there, I think 43,000 uh, initially uh, delivered. And then, as you know, there are four counties that are receiving deliveries from the federal government directly. That's beyond Chicago. Um, and that's uh, St. Clair County, Madison County, Lake County, and Cook County. And so uh, they'll be rolling out over the next several days uh, the, the entire 85,000, 85 to 86,000 vaccines, vaccinations that will be available this week. Maybe a question for Dr. Azika, I'm not sure, but what level of protection or immunity do these folks have after that first shot? We know they need two. And then how, how closely uh, do you hope people watch this process so that you can combat the public skepticism about the vaccine they want? Right, well, first of all, congratulations and thank you so much for your service and for being part of this monumental day. It's very important that everyone understands that you do need both vaccines with that minimum of 21 days apart. And so they cannot consider themselves appropriately covered or immune uh, from the single shot. And we don't have actual data to say what happens if you don't get that second, because the plan is to have that booster after 21 days. So we are it's an important step, but there's still absolutely another step as, as well as the continued mitigations that have to continue. I hope that all the people who are watching this have confidence that this is a vaccine that they should take as well. I know that many people in this community will know these wonderful individuals who've been working on behalf of their communities to, to save lives and provide needed services and now are being able to take this step to protect their, their own lives. So uh, I think everyone has reason to be excited that we are at the beginning of the end. Dr. Zika, I know as a hospital administrator up in Will County, who is slated to get the vaccine this week, and that's because enough doctors and nurses and frontline healthcare workers said they didn't want the vaccine. Should that be happening, or is it a matter of like it's too complicated to reallocate, you know, given the uh, just the temperature it needs to be? you know, kept that and might, might as well not go to waste. Of course we want no vaccine wasted. And I do think given the small amount of doses that have been allotted for this week, that I think there should be more than enough healthcare workers, workers in the healthcare setting that would qualify. So I would definitely urge those to, to look at the rosters of the people in that healthcare setting in the hospitals because I'm pretty sure there's enough people willing to take this vaccine and that's what we want to do. We want to be in line with our ACIP guidelines of our healthcare workers, the workers in the healthcare setting and make sure that we take them, take them first. So I think we can do that with the limited amount of doses that we have for this, this initial push. We have 96 hospitals that will be giving vaccines this week. Uh, those were the associated with the 50 counties that had the highest death per capita. And so that's just for this week. And of course, there'll be subsequent pushes every single week. By next week, uh, all hospitals will be engaged uh, in the effort. So this is just 
the beginning. Patience will be the name of the game, but we will get this out to all of our, our workers in the healthcare setting. What can members of the public expect to get the vaccine? Again, I think we've tried to talk about that. This is going to be an extended process, even though this is the last mile. Uh, we have you know, thir almost 13 million people in the state. Herd immunity uh, requires maybe 80%. We're talking about 10 million people. Uh, five have done it now, but <laughs> it will take quite a, quite a while to, to get to uh, that 10 million. And so again, being patient, it's hard to give an exact timeline because I don't know how many doses I will have in, in January and February. So as more vaccines become uh, authorized through that uh, emergency use authorization process, that will give us more and more available supply. And as more and more people learn about this vaccine and decide they're going to get it, that will give us available arms to put it in. And so the combination of those two factors and the logistics of getting it to them, that's when we'll get to, to the end. It will be many, many months. I think most of 2021 will be spent in this uh, effort. But I'm excited for the engagement and for the support of the community to get this done as rapidly as possible. Doctor, some people, doctor, Sorry. some people are saying, well, we'll just wait and see what happens because they're nervous about this. Will that offset the results if people tend to hold back to wait to see if there are reactions? For themselves or? Well, for others. I think they're nervous. They want to let everybody else go first. Will that delay <laughs> our progress? I, I do imagine that, you know, as with any kind of change or any kind of activity that you're trying to take on, there will be early adopters, there will be never adopters, uh, there will be late adopters, and then there will be people in the middle. And so I know these people are helping for some of those later or middle adopters to say, hey, I see someone who looks just like me, who does the same work that I do, who's from my community, that's getting this done, that's from my state. And so I, I imagine that there will be a big push uh, towards you know, later, maybe in the spring, where people are all rushing, saying, yeah, yeah, all those people that I know that got jobs, they're doing great and they haven't caught COVID. I think that will be the encouragement for many people. And so there might be a big surge of people wanting the vaccine a little bit later. But I still think that there are adequate numbers of people now. So this will be a continual process for much of 2021. Is that a question from the reporter? Mm -hmm. 